So we, I took it upon myself to, to start a platform that can address these challenges. So our primary goal of the Africa Rising Foundation is to actually change and break down the misconceptions the world has on Africa in order for us to be able to instill and uplift the pride, dignity, and confidence of young Africans. And you ask me why. Why do you want to uplift and instill this pride and dignity and confidence? It's because we come from a past that has um, continuously broken down the mentality of a black man. Because we come from apartheid. The apartheid system said a black person is a laborer. He can only become a mechanic or a plumber or a miner. That is all he can do. He cannot become a doctor or a physician or a scientist. So this is the primary reason why we have set up our foundation in order to instill this pride and confidence in our youth. And so the, the best way we thought we could achieve this was through working in education because we all know that true success cannot be achieved without proper education, without basic education. And in our country, uh, we're still having a bit of challenges in terms of the amount of children who are receiving education, but also good education. You know, it's not just about education, but about good education as well. And uh, the second sort of area that we work in at the Africa Rising Foundation is entrepreneurship and leadership development. Entrepreneurship is very important because it is one of the key ways in which we can address development. You know, the biggest employers in very advanced uh, societies are not the government, it's the private sector. So it is in our best interest for the government to actually have institutions, which we have now in South Africa, that support entrepreneurs, <coughs> that enable them to, to given the skills in order for them to make sure that they have these businesses, you know, from the incubation stage to fundraising to assisting them with if cash flow problems, you know, whatever it is that is needed in the process of becoming a successful entrepreneur. And finally, we also work in the cultural aspect because we feel that it's very important for young people to be proud of where they come from. So ultimately, Africa Rising is a platform that you know enables every child from Africa to say, I am an African, I know what it means to be an African, and I'm proud of being an African. And you know, if I use a contemporary sort of example, when I go out here to a restaurant, I can hear uh, Argentinian music, you know, and, and they are Spanish. But a lot of the time in my country, when I go to a restaurant or such an occasion, there's a lot of Western influence. And we want to be able to have more African uh, <coughs> sort of expression of our culture. So, you know, the vision for Africa Rising is creating a continent whereby Africans are able to communicate, trade, travel, uh, at, at, at ease, you know, without having the necessary uh, limitations that we have currently. Uh, we want to be able to set up an Africa Rising, uh, you know, office with Africa Rising members in Argentina, for example. So when some young Africans decide they want to go and visit Buenos Aires for the first time and they've never been here, he will be able, you know, to have a contact, you know, some Argentinian people who are part of the who will be able to show him uh, what the Argentinian people like, you know. They like to go out and they like to eat Milanesa, for example, you know. Uh, that, those are the kind of things that we like to dance tango, or maybe not for the young, but for the old, you know. And, and vice versa, so when Argentinians, they come to South Africa, we will have, you know, young people who will be able to take them out and show them what the African way of life is. And that is, our vision as, as, as the Africa Rising uh, institution. And I'd like to just close off. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, 
The South to South cooperation is very important. Uh, if you look at globalization, it's actually more of a move from north to south. So it's um, and that's you know affecting us in many ways because now we are highly influenced by the West. So you know our culture, our language is is at stake. You know our identity is at stake. And for me, you know, traveling to Argentina is very important because through my conference, you know, speaking at the FIA about entrepreneurship, I didn't, I didn't only talk about the importance of entrepreneurship, but I talked about the history of our country, how we're able to overcome, and what is coming in the future. So through me traveling and coming here, I was able to meet so many different people, um, you know, from different backgrounds, working in education and business. And you know what, my, our former president, when I was talking about the African Renaissance, uh, he talks about people to people, economic uh, empowerment and growth and, and networking. And that is what is actually more important uh, because it's about the way you think, you know. If you look at our, our history, my grandfather and obviously the ANC, they were able to break the physical chains. So the physical, you know, the, the apartment said, you can't go here, you can't do this, you can't be friends with the white person. And they were able to break that. But now, the next sort of generational uh, struggle is actually a mental struggle, which is much harder to see. Uh, it's much harder to fight because you can't see it. And that, for us, is also very much in the economic uh, liberation movement. That is that is the next sort of struggle, you know, for us because you mean the domination, cultural domination of the West, from us? Yes, yes, yes. Because um, what I was going to say is, in my country, it's very uh, the economy is still very much in the hands of, of the minority. You know, 15% uh, of the white population have 90% of the wealth in my country. So we still have a long way to go, but we have been moving in the right steps. And you know, racism is, is almost dead. You know, it's very small. But like I say, South to South is very important. You know, especially on a human or person to person level. You know, in order for us to engage, share, and because what, what one thing I saw about the Argentinian uh, community, which I really value, is the education system. I mean, they have free universities. You know, we are still working to provide and make sure that there's free schools. So there's many things that we can learn. And of course, on entrepreneurship and business, we can also exchange. So the South to South is, is key to our development and to our strength and growth. I'm not, you know, <coughs> the reason why I put an emphasis on the youth is because the youth are young and their minds are open. You know, and they are able, they, they minds are like sponges, they absorb a lot and they can learn a lot. This does not mean that I do not see the value in old people or people who are already qualified because the skills that we need as far as the youth is concerned are vested within the old people. So I'm not discriminating against race or age or anything of the sort, but my concentration as part of the youth, I understand the youth, you know. It's very hard to change uh, the, the mind of an old person because they've lived, they've experienced, they've gone through it. And you know, in my country, the little uh, uh, racism that exists is mainly in the old people because it's hard for them to change and think differently. And that is why at Africa Rising, our motto is a state of mind. Africa Rising is a state of mind. It's not about color or age. It's about how you think. You know, in order for you to become a member of Africa Rising, you have to be able to contribute. You can be a woman, you can be old, you can be young, but you have to be able to contribute. And what we also need in, in Africa, actually all over the world, is good uh, mentors, you know, who can teach the young. And that obviously is vested within the old population. So that is, very, I just didn't touch on it, but it's very important, you know, the, the the skills, the experience uh, that the old people have, the qualified people have. So it's, it's, everybody is needed. It's all about how you think and how you want to change the world.
Buenas tardes y sea bienvenido a nuestro país. Quería preguntarle eh, qué aspectos del ser africano le dan orgullo. ¿Y qué aspectos del ser sudamericano, esa es una lo que podría eh, facilitar un aporte de parte nuestra para la cooperación entre nuestros pueblos? Um, I'm very proud of being an African, uh, you know, being the first human beings on this planet. Um, Um, I'm very proud of uh, being a South African because we have, you know, some of the greatest leaders from our country. You know, not only Mandela but Gandhi was from South Africa as well. You know, he did his work there. Uh, I'm proud of South Africa because we have one of the most advanced financial services system. Uh, you know, which you can compare to London or to New York. I'm proud of, of South Africa because we have also one of the most advanced telecommunications uh, network, you know. In, in, in South Africa we say that mobile phone penetration is 110% because half the people have more than one cell phone, they have two cell phones. And this is very important for information, the flow of information, uh, and obviously development. So, to be honest with you, I can I can go on and say I'm proud of being an African because you know by nature I can dance, I can move. You know by nature I'm a vibrant person. I'm proud of being an African. Um, I think South America is very similar to how we live in, uh, in Africa, you know. Um, very hospitable people, very welcoming people, or at least in my experience. I mean, it's my first time uh, here to South to Argentina, and the experience of meeting the people, you know, has been excellent. I was in Cordoba, and, uh, you know, almost every day they invite me for asado, you know. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities. Uh, like I said earlier, I would love to definitely, I think there's a lot we can learn from the education system that they have here. Uh, free education is the key to, to success and real success, you know, sustainable success that can keep going on for generations. So, yeah, there's a lot. I'm just mentioning a few. Um, I think, you know, you have to be proud of where you are, where you come from. And also, those are the people, everybody, you know, whether you, no matter where you're from, you know, Middle East, if you come from America, you have to be proud of where you come from. That's what it starts with. Uh, so I found it very important to start with this, especially in Africa, because we are too quick to want to become like the West. So as, as a beginning, as a, as a launch pad, because we are just starting, we have just established the foundation last year. So I think that well, the first step is to be proud of who you are, know who you are. Huh? And from after that, I mean, we are, are very welcoming. We love to share information, share experiences, share knowledge. So I think one has to be very uh, sort of careful that you mustn't be too proud that you are boastful, you know? Be proud, but also have the opportunity to listen to people. Um, I think that's that's one of the ways. You know, we are too quick to to always talk. Hey, you, you did wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I've said my say. Now I want you to also respond. Give me your perception, your view of what you think, is. and have a, a mutual platform where we can exchange, you know, back and forth continuously. And I think through that, being able to listen to each other. That's one, that's the first step. And then, you know, we can build from there. <coughs> um, well, I think it's also, again, through education, you know, because I don't know, in my country, like you said, the shadows of Zimbabwe, uh, I think people are frustrated because uh, it seems as though Zimbabweans have come into a country in the millions and are taking, you know, our jobs. Uh, 
but it's not 100% true, and I don't think it's a shadow either. I think we must understand that the liberation movement, we had a lot of help from our neighboring countries. So, although the ANC today is very much uh, put on a pedestal, put on a platform to say, hey, these are the guys that did it. They had a lot of help from Zanu Piaf, from, uh, you know, uh, Abla, from different, uh, you know, liberation movements in different parts of the country. And once people are able to understand that, then they'll be able to also uh, understand that you cannot develop in isolation because developing in isolation is very dangerous. You know, like South Africa. You know, it's the hub of, of the business in, in the whole continent. But if we do not make sure that Zimbabwe and the other countries also develop at more or less the same rate, that is in our best interest for the st stability and security of our region. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the ways. But uh, I think also continuously education, communication, uh, facilitation, um, yeah, that's, 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 those are the, some of the ways, I think, through education. And also, I think we in South Africa have been a little bit spoiled uh, by our government, um, you know, because we came in and they said, we're going to build a million houses, we're going to give everything to people. And over, over time, uh, I think we became a bit uh, sort of stagnant, you know, in our ways, and we became a bit spoiled. And the, and the Zimbabwean people, are actually, they have actually better education than South Africans, you know, and they are willing to work because they know how bad the situation is. So I think people, once they are able to get a chance to travel abroad, not like uh, South America, but in Africa, and see what is happening, and compare it to South Africa, they would be so grateful <laughs> at our situation. So those are one of the ways, education, and, and traveling and experiencing, you know, different cultures and seeing what's out there, that's when you'll know.